like if I pursue this and this works and this becomes something that now all of a sudden I'm starting getting recognition mm. for it and people are starting to see I'm like going this is going to help pay for college mm. you know this is this is going to help put my kids so you're through motivated. school this is don't fear grit with Wob Tower Mina marketing strategies and advertising technologies to help you build a better business Hey guys, welcome back and we've got another really great guest in this studio, someone who is going after a really um, a very specific niche and she actually has been rewarded patents on a product and I know that by itself is something that a lot of people are interested in because they are overwhelmed by that process. You feel like you've got a great product, you want a patent and you have no idea where to start and you think it's going to cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars. But this is someone that we have in, in the studio who has successfully done that not once but several times. A few, a few times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyway, without further ado, I want to welcome her. Helene, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. Oh, yeah, of course. to be here. This is new. <laughs> it's different. <laughs> well, first off, and I always like to give our audience context of who, who we have featured today, let everyone know, what's your name? What's the name of your company? Uh, my name is Helene. The name of my com company is Subsensuals. Um, I'm a mom who became an entrepreneur. Love that. I, I, we're, we're seeing a lot more female entrepreneurs, uh, you know, come to to the stage. I think it's absolutely amazing. We featured, um, actually, so far, the vast majority of all of our uh, featured interviews has been female entrepreneurs. I think that's really cool because yeah. you know what? I think a lot of women that want to do this, they don't know how to start, or they yep. don't know what to do, and they kind of think about it, but yep. they don't take the step to do it. Yep. And I think that something is. Um, needs to be women encouraged to 100%, do this. yeah. And I think the, the more that we see women becoming entrepreneurs and then vocalizing, saying, yes, I did this, I'm, I'm doing it, I'm being successful with it, just that enough is empowering to other women who like are, are teetering, like you're saying. And because uh, that, that fear is, is a common factor now, just with women, but if that fear is a common factor with all entrepreneurs of why they don't pull the trigger. Um, is they have this great idea or they're really great and they're, they're an expert at something and they just don't take the next steps to actually make a career out of it because they're afraid. And they, they would rather just stay in their comfort zone than risk risk their comfort zone for something better. And that's exactly it. It's, it's stepping out of your comfort zone. And, yeah. and for me, it was actually one of my brothers who kind of pushed me, who's mm. just like, you know, when I told him what I did because I had to tell somebody because I'd messed up something and he literally spoke bit his drink all over the place, burst out laughing, and then made a comment to me, and I was like, okay, and he's like, we need to try this. He's like, let's yeah. see what, let's fix it, and we fixed it, and I almost gave it away. Wow. I almost handed it off to somebody, really? and he literally was like, we need to call a lawyer, yeah. and we need to call somebody who's not our brother. So I was like, all right, and I reached out to a friend of mine who said, let me see. Yeah. And I'm like, your wife and I have been friends for 14 years. I kind of can't show you this. Like, can you <laughs> point me in the right direction? And he's like, my partner is a patent attorney. So I was like, okay. all right. So we were talking, me and his partner, and I, I did. I threatened the guy with an inch of his life. I said, please do wow. not show Rich the pictures because, you know, his wife and I are friends. Of course, of course. And um, he, you know, swore up and down. I'm not going to show it to him. And he looked at the picture, and he's like, I don't get it. And I was like, okay, I knew that yeah. was going to happen. Yep, yep. I sent him another picture, and two minutes he's like I need to call my wife and I'm like you need to call your wife like uh -oh. I didn't get it it didn't yeah. register yeah and then he goes we're patenting this and I looked at you know I'm on the phone with him and I yes. go you know this from looking at a picture He goes, this is my job this is yes. what I do well, yep you know which is why it's important to hire the experts right don't rely on your own understanding outsource to the experts. and that's exactly what it was because I yeah. had no clue didn't understand didn't anything and he's yeah. like all right we need to meet we need to talk we need to see how we're gonna do this yeah and you know we made an arrangement uh -huh. and they gave me the idea of, of what it was gonna cost uh -huh. Um, and I went in, and the morning that I went in, I had found online something that was similar, that I thought was similar. Yeah. So it was, it was about a two hour battle of trying to get me to understand that yeah. this is not what you do, this is yours as jewelry, yours is aesthetically pleasing, yes. yours is very different. Uh -huh. And I handed the check over, and it was three and a half years yeah. of, of Was you know, it a little waiting. bit scary? It was very scary, because yeah. you know I would get emails, we have to change this, we have to redesign this, this has to go back to the designer, to the, to the guy who, um, their draftsman who does yes. the drawing because it has to be specific drawings mm -hmm. drawn out and stuff. And um, in the meantime, I had broken my back and I didn't know. Oh my gosh. So two days before I went in for emergency surgery, wow. I was awarded the patent, the first one. Oh and my gosh. And I was gosh. like, wait, I got a patent? Holy shit, now I'm going <laughs> in for emergency surgery. So, but it, it was 
you know, Helene, we have to change this. How can yeah. we change this that it's not going to affect the yes. design of the product or is it's not going to affect, you know, because the, the patent department, they want so much yeah. stuff from you. And yeah. I'm like, you know, and all I'm thinking in my head going is how much more money am I, you know, laying out? Yeah. And that's, that's what it was. And you also get to that point, you're going, is it worth it? Mm. Do you want to lay out X amount of dollars? Mm -hmm. um, you know, yes, they were my friends, so it wasn't what everybody else yeah. does, but it was still a yeah. lot of money. And I'm like, you know, going, we're going to do this, we're going to do this. Yeah. You know, because then you get the patent and you're sitting there going, okay, I got it, now what? Like, yeah, what's, what's next? The, what's the next step? Yeah. And for me, I think that was the hardest thing because I'm going, well, what is the next step? Yeah. I don't know enough people. Mm -hmm how do I launch this? How do I do this? Mm -hmm. Which is where the people that I'm friends with in my lifestyle, yeah, it was talking to them and some of them saying, you know, we'll help you with whatever you need. We yeah. don't want anything for it. And that's what it became that I have, you know, there's a few women that specifically helped me. Mm. And we went to AVN in Vegas, which mm. was where we launched. And it was the most daunting experience yeah. because, you know, I've always had you ever do uh, done anything like that. Before? I've never done anything like that before. Okay. I've always done, you know, I've always worked in jewelry um, because my son does have epilepsy. When I would sit in the hospital, I would mm. sit and weave and bead, you know, things to just yeah. keep me occupied while he yeah. was in, you know, being hooked up to things so they could figure out what's going on. So when I said, you know, we have an opportunity to do AVN and, you know, three of my friends are like, we'll go with you. We'll help you or yeah. whatever. And it was mind-blowing because mm. the product was so taken people were like holy shit what is this this is so different mm -hmm. this is not what we've seen and i'm not there's nobody else that has my product mm. so to have something that is such the niche market yeah. and that people are like holy shit i don't have to be pierced i can just try this and you know it can it can cause pleasure and pain mm -hmm. it all depends on what you um can handle I have some women that wear the product like it's nothing. Mm. I have other women that wear the product for like 15, 20 minutes, okay, take it off. And then yeah. I have other women like, oh, I'm gonna you know, reach up and learn sure. to you know, build up my tolerance. But mm. then I have people that come up to me and they're like, this is like so exciting, like mm. I don't have to be pierced. I can take this off when I want. Yeah. It's not attached to me, you know, because what yes. women don't understand, when you do pierce yourself, it takes a year to heal. Wow, is that right? If you are young and you've pierced yourself, you usually pierce through the milk duct, so you can't breastfeed because you cause scar tissue. Wow. And that's usually one of the only places on the body that scar tissue can't be removed from. Oh my gosh. So there's a lot of women out there that have done it. And that's how this all came to be. It was yeah. looking for something that was safe. Yep. That wasn't permanent. Yeah. Because a lot of people, young young people from Shades of Grey, you know, yep. from watching those movies, yeah. coming into the lifestyle, I want to have a baby and I can't breastfeed now because yeah. I pierced my nipples. Well, right. that's where this product comes in. And this, Got it. you know, this product also comes in for you know, young people that, you know, I want to try this first, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. it, it's if you like it and you really, really want to get pierced, you yeah. know, go get pierced, send me back the product. Yeah. I'll change it to a piercing for you, yeah. so, you know, and that's another thing is that I managed to take the product into. I don't just do it for women that aren't pierced. Uh -huh. If somebody sees a design and they're like, I'm pierced, but I want to try the magnet. OK, you can yeah. use the magnet a different way. Gotcha. And we'll change the way it aesthetically looks because you have to change it mm. so that the, the design hangs differently. Okay. Or I can make it for your piercing. And I've had people that have come up to me. I did I did a show where somebody's like, it was kind of dead. You know, we were sure. we just kind of, and I was like, you know what? I said, let me see if I can bang out a piece for you. And I did, it took me about an hour and she was standing there and I did it for- You designed right there. Designed it right there. I was wow. like, she was just what she, I just kind of got the concept of what she had. I was like, yeah. you know what? I have something that I think is really gonna work. Yeah. And I designed it. And they went out to dinner, and the next day I'm like, why are people lining up to, for me to wow. do pieces? And she's like, well, I wore it to dinner, and these women are like, they're looking, they're like, where's this thing attached to me? <laughs> and she's like, oh, it's attached to my piercing. She's oh like, you wanna, goodness. you know, they were in a restaurant. And she said, I was like, um, I said, there's 3,500 people here right now. I can't do right, this I now. I was like, I was like <laughs> you no didn't expect customer. That I, didn't, I didn't expect that response. And they wow. were like, well, can you, I was like, we can order it. I was like, yeah. you know, you can pick out what you want. I was yeah. like, and, you know, but I'm like, and she came up to me, she's like, did people come? I was like, yeah. I said, and today yeah. was not the day. I was like, 3,500 <laughs> people here. And like, we wow. literally, we were slammed. I actually yeah. had 10 people in the booth with me that it was, you know, I had two people watching. Yes. Because at the time, my product was always laid out. Mm. So people could kind of walk by and steal and it, steal if, it. They, yeah. if they wanted to. And so when I did AVN last year, there's a guy who owns the, he owns the company Rock Candy. 
and his family works for Disney, which is really hysterical. Wow. So he walked over to me and he said to me, he goes, your booth is the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my life. He goes, and will you please let me design a booth for you? He oh goes, you are not a mom and pop business. Yeah. And that's what it was. I looked like a mom and pop business. Yeah. Well, you were learning. I was, totally. So every yeah. year it was different. Every year we did. And he said to me, if I ever see your stuff not under glass again, I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> and I really was like, okay. Uh, so yeah. AVN, you know, I was like, oh my God, this guy's yeah. going to charge me like $3,000. And yeah. he walks up to me the last day of AVN and yeah. he gives me this design. I go, well, what do I owe you? He goes, nothing. He goes, yeah. but I want this fixed the next time yeah. I see you. Yeah, the community of entrepreneurs, they're great, actually. Yes. They really are, you know, and and, with, and especially the entrepreneurs that understand that tide rises for everyone, you know, so everyone sh pit pitches right. in, and it does, just by default of you helping, it does benefit it other people. It totally does, you know? and he, he designed this whole booth for me. Wow. And I did the sex expo in Greenpoint, Brooklyn, and he was supposed to be there right next to me. I'm like, yeah. going, oh my God, yeah. he's next yeah. to me. <laughs> I was like, I said, th this just can't happen. I'm like, I'm yeah. not ready for him, but... I went and I, okay. I bought up a pop-up booth okay. that, you know, is in the container yeah, and yeah. it just pops up. Yes. My girlfriend did the whole logo on the booth design. Yeah, it's great. We found, instead of glass, because it's very hard to ship glass. Of course. Um, we found these containers that actually are for coins Perfect. and jewelry. I know and exactly they, what they right, are. Right. Yes. And they pop open. Yep. We put a little bit of Velcro on them. We put them on the, it Done. looked amazing. But Love my brother, it. who is, he works at the Metropolitan Opera House, yeah. he's like, we need something a little bit more. We need something sure. to pop these more. Yeah. So he was, they were so impressed. They're like, people walk yeah. by, they're like, oh my God, look at Substantials. You've yeah. grown up. You know, and that was what it was. It was like, they're like, holy shit, yeah. you are Well, your business evolved. Now. Right. Yeah. So then my brother took the cases and he's like, we need something else. And yeah. I had gone to Michael's and I bought, you know, the, the cardstock that was yeah. all sparkles. You were being resourceful. In all different colors. Yeah. He measured, he put it inside yeah. so that there was like a border around it. We put the stuff on. And, and it looks people, sharp. it was, it, people have come up to the yeah. booth now and they're like, oh my God, like, yeah. look at these pieces, look at these designs because they're really making them pop. So yeah. it's like, we took it to the next step. So the guy from Rock Candy, he's like, yeah. I'm so proud of you. He's like, That's you, awesome. you did such an amazing job. And for Very me, cool. that was, that was like such a huge thing because yeah. this is a guy who he's like he designs booths and yes. stuff like that and he's like i'm putting something together for you because mm. i don't want you to get ripped off yeah. and he's like and you're a professional he's like you're yeah. so different from where you started yes and for me that was such a because yeah in the industry it's it's a male it's definitely a male yep. oriented industry okay. so they kind of frown upon us a little bit yeah you know it's like Women but you made your in. mark. Right, I made yeah. my mark. And yeah. he made me feel so good. good. And I'm like, that's he's awesome. like, you're there. You're, that's you're awesome. where you need to be. And it's yeah. made it's made a very a big, big difference. difference. I want to ask, go back to the uh, the patent real quick. Was there any time throughout the process where you wanted to give up? Oh, most definitely. When they called me and said, we need to change the pictures again. Yeah. And we need to redo this. And it has to go back to the draftsman again. And I'm like going... You know, because every time it goes back to the draftsman, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, it was anywhere between eight hundred and a thousand dollars. Each time. Each time. And it, this was a few times. This was a few times. Okay. So you know. So it, we're talking about a pretty big investment yeah. here at this point. Yeah. And at over ten thousand dollars. Yes. For the whole thing. For the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. And it th that for me was the hardest thing because yeah. I was like, all right, we gotta redraw it again, and what yeah. do I have to pay him now? You know, and and, yeah, and yeah. they were very nice about it. You know, of course. They, they were. They were like. Yeah. It, it's you know because a part of me was like you know saying to him I go is this worth it do we should we even well that do was this? my next question is so you wanted to uh, you know you said there were moments where you maybe wanted to quit you obviously we know that you didn't because right. we know how that story plays out um, so but if you could just sort of share with everyone was it worth it, it totally I I don't so you would for, go back and do, I would go it. back and do it all over again would. even okay. though the because it was all a learning curve. It was yeah. all a learning Even experience. though it was stressful, it was expensive. It was very stressful, it was very expensive. But and, it was worth it. You know, in between all of this, having a child who has epilepsy yeah. and special needs, and my husband had lost his job. Mm. So, you know, things that I had to pay out of pocket for my son. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was things that you were like sitting here going, which way do I go? Which, yes. which, which way is it? Is it you know, but then I kept saying, I'm like, if I pursue this and this works and this becomes something that now all of a sudden I'm starting getting recognition mm. for it and people are starting to see, I'm like going, this is going to help pay for college. Mm. You know, this is this is going to help put my kids so you're through motivated. school. So I'm totally, yeah. you know, there were definitely times that you could find me curled up in a ball in tears yeah. going, I, I can't go through with this. Yes. I can't, where I'm, I'm sending a letter to, you know, the lawyers going, should we do this? And yeah. they're like, you're going to get this. Yes. It's not like you're not going to get it. It's yes. how you're going to use it and uh -huh. make it work. To yeah, your advantage. I also want to add a little something here. Um, is uh, 
I have a very sort of, I guess, unique way of looking at failure. I don't look at these situations where you had to like, let's say, refine the drawing, refine right. some of the wording as failures. I will actually just look at them in, as obstacles. Failures is when you give up. Right. And in this case, you did not fail at all. Right. You just experienced obst obstacles that you persevered through. So you never experienced right. failure. And, and those obstacles, I think they definitely made me stronger. They made me realize that I have something that nobody else has. Yeah. And as a woman, you know, and that's a big thing, as a woman owning mm -hmm. patents, that's, that's a very big thing yeah. because that's not atypical. So for me, and it was them saying, we're gonna do this, we're gonna get there, mm. you can't give up on it. You know, and they knew I was crying hysterically at times so that, that I'm sitting here going, sure. I'm just gonna throw in the towel, forget about it, we're not and gonna. And I will say, it's not bad to do that. Huh? Right. You know, that's fine, be emotional. You could be a little bit even disappointed just don't let that disappointment well, you know, that's turn into something it. that that's, causes that's, you to stop. That's what it was. it was. It was stepping away from the disappointment, going, I've got something. And that's, yes. that's really what it was, is I kept going, I've got something that nobody else has. Yeah. I will get there. Mm -hmm. And for me, though, it was also learning to say, I need help, mm. which is something that's very Oh, everyone hard. struggles with that. And, yeah. you know, this is my baby. This is my yes. thing that's very close to my chest. And I finally, you know, finally said to my brother, I said, you're right. I said, I can't do this all. Yeah. I, I said, I, I have to learn yeah. to, to let go and see where I can get mm. the help. And, you know, and that's been the hardest part, I think, right now yeah. is that I am starting to grow. Yes. I just did Vegas Edge, which was for buyers mm. and stuff. I got six stores that bought, wow. you know, for me, which I never thought was going to happen. Then yeah. there's holiday products that, you know, we'd like to talk to you. Yeah. Getting the email from RuPaul, you mm. know, we want you to come to RuPaul's Drag Con, and I'm just going, excuse me, what? You know, thinking <laughs> it was spam. And my daughter's looking at it. She's like, that's real, mom. I'm like, yeah. really? Yeah. You know, so it's wow. it's people that are now reaching out to me that are like, you've got this product that's just something so different and yep. not, you know, and it's not ugly. And I think that's what a lot of people uh -huh. who talk about nipple clamps, like it's just a barbell with two balls on the end. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's not what my stuff is. You know, my stuff is jewelry yep. and, you know, I mean, I had, um, we went to Temptations. We did an adult, I took 10 people to Temptations for an adult weekend. And I bought the jewelry with me because there's a magazine that wants to do a story on me, but they can't mm. use the pictures because the pictures are on nipples. Sure. So I'm like, you know, if we do it in water, let's take some pictures, a little distorted, see if we can use it that way. So one woman there, she's like, what are those? And I was like, they're magnetic nipple clamps. She's like, can I try them? Mm -hmm. She was my walking advertisement for five days. You're she kidding. bought them, and I was wow. like, "She's like, well, you selling them?" I was like, "Well, I was kind of using them for pictures." But no, I'll, 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 you know, I'll sell them. And she sold every single pair. You're kidding. She bought five different people over. Oh my god. They gosh. bought them, and then they're like, "She's like, well, what else do you have?" I was like, "I have clip clamps." She's like, "Really? Can we see?" And I was yeah. like, "Well, not on, but yeah. you know, yeah. here you go." And yeah. They bought out every, I was like going, "I did bought these to take a little different pictures, just to you know, because it was an adult's, sure, you know." Place I was mm -hmm. like, oh, we can take pictures in the water. You can walk around topless. This is because, and she was my every time I turn. I'm like, really? She's like, these things are great. And I'm yeah. like, you know, she's like, and I can take them off when I want. And I yeah. can wear them when I want. Yeah. And she's like jumping around in the pool, yeah. showing everybody that they're staying on. And I'm like, okay, you can have those. You know? Yeah. And she's like, no, we're paying for them. I was like, yeah. but you're a walking advertisement. I was like, yeah. what you're doing is fantastic yeah. for me. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I just really, it makes the, all the hard it, work. It makes it. It does. Worth it, it. it makes it worth it. And that's yes. what I think. Because I really had self doubt. Yeah. You know, I really was like, is this worth it? Is it really yep. you know, is it consuming too much of my time? Is it is it taking away from my family? Is it yeah. you know, is this something that I really want to pursue? Because I do travel. Yeah. So it's Well, it's, here's the thing. One thing that people who don't own a business, when they look at entrepreneurs, what they don't realize is that owning a business, you work longer and harder right. than when you're working from a nine to five. Right. Because and you get to just come in at nine, you leave at five, you get your steady, reliable paycheck, and that's not being and an entrepreneur. And that's not being an entrepreneur. No, 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 not at all. You know, and I, I do, and I sit there, it's like when Etsy goes off, like, you know, we were in Mount Snow and I put myself on vacation mode, something I, I'm very hard to do. Yeah. You know, but I was with my kids. I was like, you know what, I'm with family. I, yep. I got to shut down for a few days. And I figure, all right, I'll take it off vacation mode on Thursday because we're going to be home on Sunday. So yeah. if anybody wants to place an order, you know, it's not like they won't go out when I. Yeah. I literally took the thing off vacation mode. My daughter and I were in a store. And I go, did my phone just ka ching? She goes, six times, mom. And I'm like, oh were they gosh. waiting for me to take it off yeah. vacation mode? And I literally, five minutes after I took it off vacation mode, I had six orders. And I'm like, oh my gosh. 
okay. That's awesome. I, I was like, you know, so for me, that was really good. And yeah. she's like, well, do you, can you do it here? I was like, no. I was like, it'll ship out. <laughs> you know, because I made sure that the shipping time was yes. that I get home on Sunday, I print yeah. out the label, it'll yeah. ship out, and, you know, we'll be fine. Mm -hmm. But it was for me, I was like, I go, you know what? My daughter said it right. She's like, Mom, you don't realize what you really have. Mm. And my daughter's only going to be 14. Mm. But she's like, you don't get the product you have. She's mm. like, you, you know, because I'm like, oh, I got an order. She's like, Mom, you have a really great product. Yeah, she's you got like, a business. You have something, you've got you a, have business. a real she's business. She's like, this is yeah. real. And she's like, you're, you're still, I, I'm still kind of stuck in the back of my head going, yeah. is it real? Well, is it's it, confidence. Is it? Right. And that's, and, you know, and that's where the people that are in my life, yeah. the women that are in my life. Yeah. The confidence that they've instilled in me, yeah. that they've showed they encourage me, you. you know, that like yeah. when we did AVN, no, you need to be the interview person, not yeah. not one of us talking yeah. about it. And literally, somebody came up, said, I want to interview with me. Yeah. And literally, the, the hand was in my back, pushed me. She's like, <laughs> here she is. She's the owner. And I'm like, yeah, OK. You know. I think you're making a really good point is when you're an entrepreneur is making sure that you have a really good circle. Mentors, accountability right. partners. You know, I don't know that we're meant to go through life in any in any degree of our life alone we're not and there's no reason to do it alone right, but a lot of people feel like they have to do it alone right and, you know i can honestly and it's say, unfortunate that they feel that way i can honestly say when i first started this that i was like all right i'm gonna do it i'm, yeah. I'm not letting anybody in this yeah is, you know it's my baby it's, yes. it's everything and it took me to having these women who helped me mm. at every event who i hear them talking and i'm like yeah. wait no i need to step you know yes. and they're like you need to step in like yes. yes we can do this but you're still it's still your baby yeah but we're here to support you and i think that because i had that support and i still have that support mm -hmm. that it's really important because if you don't have that support yeah. of whether it's a guy or a girl yeah. whatever who if you don't have those people behind you saying you got something really good here yeah you know, yeah. you, you have to fine tune it. You have to, and you're always growing. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not going to say that I'm not always growing because every day I learn something new, you know, um, that if you just get the right people who believe in you, mm -hmm. it makes you believe in yourself. And I think that's the hardest part for women is because we don't, we, we're so afraid to talk about things. Mm -hmm. And then when we do talk about them, we don't know how to like kind of push them out. Yeah. Like, how do we, do we really believe that? Are you just saying it just to yeah, say it? Yeah, right, you know, right, And that's, right. that's where the second guessing comes in. Yeah. And, you know, the men and anxiety and stuff like that, you know, I see it with men, with the anxiety and stuff. Yeah. But I see women, because we are much more emotional creatures mm -hmm. than you guys are, we, the way we look at things is a little bit different. So yeah. we see a different type of picture. And I'm like going, you know what, you're right. I do have something that is really very different, mm -hmm. very, not, the, not what's out there, it's mm -hmm. not the norm. And I finally am not afraid to talk about it anymore. Mm. And I think that's what it is because I also teach classes for women. Oh, is who, that right? Um, will come up to me and say, I have no sensation. I breastfed for five years. Mm. So what? You breastfed for five years. That doesn't mean you don't have sensation. Mm -hmm. It means you're stuck in your head. Yeah. You know, well, how do I get sensation back? How do I do yeah. this? So I teach classes. Right. You understand sort of, the, sort of the medical stuff, the right. science. And I also teach classes on body positivity you mm. know I, I want women to understand that I used to be almost 300 pounds mm. right I'm down to 162 pounds it's not something I was given a tool and I learned how to use it but I'm still you know I look in the mirror and I'm like going I still am not used to what I'm seeing mm. so when I work with these women like when I when I teach my classes and they're like oh you're gonna stand no, I sit on the floor or I'll sit on a chair let's have a discussion and they're looking at me like you're not, no, I don't need to stand up. I want to have a discussion. Yes. I want this to be that we're yeah. talking amongst ourselves, yes. that we're not, you know, you sitting in front of the classroom teaching a podcast is yeah. entirely different. Yeah. Me sitting in front of a classroom and teaching how to feel better about yourself yeah. is, is two totally different things. Yes. So I want people to feel comfortable with me. Mm. But sitting with you in a podcast, I would feel comfortable with you sitting at a desk because that's how you kind of would learn how to yeah. do it because you'd yeah. have a computer in front of you, yeah. you're, you know, yeah. things like that. Yeah. For me, I'm like, no, come, let's have a conversation. Right, right. You know, I'm not talking at you. I'm not talking at you. Yes. I'm not explaining, you know, well, you press this button to do this for a podcast. You press, yeah. no, I'm explaining to you, well, let's talk about what you're going through, what's yeah. bothering you. Like, mindset. That's, and that's exactly it. Yes. So for me, with my product, you know, I can say to women, I was like, this can enhance your nipples. This can make you feel, mm. you know, a sensation that you didn't feel before. I have had women that have had mastectomies that have come up to me that we are actually in the process. I finally figured oh out something gosh. that for, you know, I want to wear your product, but I've had a mastectomy. 
and I don't have nipples. But how do I? I was like, give me a little time. Yeah. And I finally actually have oh, started wow. figuring it out. And where you know, I've been feeding it slowly to the lawyers. Yeah, They're like, yeah. We have to figure out how we can patent this because sure. this is also another. Yeah. But I don't Helping want these women, women to feel, feel left out, and that's yeah. what it is. And it's, you know, I think that that's a big thing is that. Women are so afraid to say certain things. They're yeah. not. They're like, I can't have this conversation. Why can't you have the conversation? What are you so afraid of? Yeah. Well, I wasn't. I wasn't raised that way, you know. So it was. I think that for me is, mm. you know, with this product. So you also make so the much. topic comfortable for right. people. You know, yeah. ask me a question about it. And I said I have no qualms answering it. Yeah. You know, and yeah. that, that I think, in the beginning, I wouldn't answer. But as yeah. as I got more into this and realized what I have yeah. and what I can give to women. Yes. I'm like, I gotta talk about it. I yeah. gotta not be afraid to discuss mm -hmm. things like that. And you know, part of that does come from that I was raised in a family that we had conversations. Both my parents were teachers, mm -hmm. and my dad, you know, you wanted to have a conversation, you could have a conversation. Yeah. You know, my mother, the same thing. You know, yeah. my I'm not gonna lie and say my mother thought that I was the. F she called me a freak when she found out about this. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, and um. But my you guys were honest with each other. I was totally honest. honest and, it was, and my brother was trying to explain it to her. Yeah. And my other brothers were like making kind of fun of it. And okay. I'm like, you know what? And, you know, we had Passover one night. And my brother, my brother is a lawyer. Mm -hmm. And he's saying something. And he's just digging in. Yeah. And finally, my, my aunt is just like going, all right, what's going on? <laughs> and I just finally looked at her and I go, you want to know the truth? Yeah. And she's like, yeah. And I told her, and oh she goodness. was hysterical. She goes, that's freaking <laughs> awesome. That's the best thing. And then yeah. she says to me, so do you know who Herschel Savage is? And I said, heard the name. She goes, yeah, he's my nephew. He's a famous porn star. Oh, my god. And gosh. I'm just going, oh, so we have that in the family now, too. <laughs> okay. But she's 92 years oh, old. Oh, jeez. Oh, my she's goodness. She's the coolest woman in the world. And she's just like, you have something amazing. She's like, this is so cool. This yeah. is great. You know, and I'm like. For me, that was encouraging also because yeah. I'm not going to lie to my family about it. Sure. It's what I do. It, it's, you know, it, it's part of my life. It's yeah. part of, you know, what I do. Yeah. So it, it's fun for me. Yeah. You know, I lost my job because my son had epilepsy. Yeah. You know, so I lost that nine to five paycheck. And I'm sitting here going, mm. I got to do something. First, I had to do something because well, I was out son, of my it mind. It sounds like your son is your why. You know, he is my why. Both yeah. my kids are my why. My daughter is off the charts brilliant. My son is, you know, has short term memory loss. He's come so far, yeah. you know, never thought he would graduate with a Regents Diploma. He's getting an advanced Regents Diploma. Oh my I'm gosh, so congratulations. Proud of him. You know, and yeah. it's, you know, my daughter knows what I do. My son knows, I don't think he grasps it yet. Yeah. He's still, yeah. you know, and it, it's, it's, you know, they're my why. They're, they're everything yes. for me. And it, it's, when did you find out about your son? I actually found out about my son had his first grand mal seizure on my birthday, four days before his seventh birthday. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And he had a grand mal seizure that lasted 45 minutes. Oh my gosh. So he came out of it. Oh my gosh. Two blocks from the hospital. And my father had died two days after 9-11. So when my son had the seizure, I had called downstairs to my brother to call an ambulance. Mm -hmm. And my brother came up. I literally, I'm pretty sure he broke my ribs because he threw me into a piece of furniture because my father had died in his arms. Mm -hmm. And he thought my son was having a stroke oh at God. first. And then he realized, I was like, lights are on, nobody's home. Yeah. And yeah. then what was really odd, it was kind of funny, but yeah. odd is that we're in the ambulance and there's this yeah. guy talking to my son, mm -hmm. having a whole conversation with him. And I'm sitting here going, is this guy like a pedophile? Because I didn't know who he was. I yeah. had no idea. And my son had been skating in kindergarten with the rec center. Okay. Um, so this guy's talking to him and, and saying all these things, and I'm just like, and then he reached out to my husband, and he goes, I think I scared the shit out of your wife on the ambulance because I knew too much about your son. And yeah. I'm like, you know, I'm like going, who the hell is this guy? You yeah. know, like, and that first thought kind of was going through, I was like, this is a sexual For, predator. Of like, course. What? You know, but he's on the ambulance with her, but yeah. him, and I'm like, so then I finally find out that he's been skating, he's one of the instructors with my oh, son at the wow. rec center, but he's also part of the ambulance company. Okay, so the, he so, already knew So him. he already okay. knew, but I didn't know him because sure. I didn't know anybody that was, you know, but when my son came out of the seizure, you know, it was two blocks before the hospital, but he was in the hospital for three days. Oh my gosh. You know, and we're not knowing what the hell's going on, yeah. and it was, you know, and then it took, because my husband had lost his job, mm. my children were on Child Health Plus, which, you know, um, granted it was insurance, but it was very tough. Yeah. And we finally made it to um, NYU Epilepsy Center. Yeah. And Dr. Davinsky, I, can, I cannot say enough about this man. It was, we walked in, 
we came in under somebody else. They brought him in, and he took over, mm-hmm. and he just put me. I felt such a sense of calm. Yeah, and peace he's of like, mind. He's like, yeah. you know, talking to him. He goes, "I'm here to fix you. Not talk to mommy mm. and daddy. I'm here to fix you." And my son even said to me, "He goes, he's talking to me. He's mm. making me." And I said, "This is the difference mm. of somebody who genuinely cares about a child. Yeah. Doesn't care that the parents are here." Like, and he mm. said to my son, "I'm going to fix every tick, twitch, everything that's going on. Oh my gosh, we are going oh my to gosh. Wow. fix this." And then he said to my son, "Can I talk to your mommy?" And he's like, "You can talk to my mommy." You know, and it was him who put us at such a peace of mind mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. got my son on the right medication, got him into yeah. the right program, and he's like he'll be fine he's yeah. like you know but he was very brutally honest with me he's sure. like listen he's like i wouldn't yeah. open him up and and he has generalized epilepsy so he it, mm. his seizures move he goes i would never open him up he mm. goes i'm gonna tell you right now he goes we're not because people go in with electrodes and they yeah. can usually he yeah. goes no he goes i'm yeah. not gonna touch him he's okay. like it's generalized we we don't know where it's coming from we okay. can't map it yeah and we're just gonna watch him and knock on wood my son's been seizure free for almost two years wow we have one more eeg to go through okay and um if that is good then yeah. you know he'll always be an epileptic but yeah 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 seizure free he took driver's ed oh my gosh so it's it's you know we've come a very long way but yeah. you know he understands that i work that i travel mm-hmm. you know and that he has anxiety you know sure. from it so it, it's yeah. you know i'll get the phone calls while i'm away it, yeah. it, it's tough you yeah. know and yeah. i'll always alert the school i'm traveling yep. you can reach me by cell phone please yeah. don't call me at four o'clock in the morning when i'm in vegas which yeah. one teacher did yeah yeah. But, you know, and because of that, I had to find something else mm-hmm. that I could do to help bring in money. Because I said to my son, husband, I said, who's going to get fired first? I said, it's me, not you. They're yeah. going to fire me. Yeah. And that's exactly what it was. It mm. was, you know, the woman gets fired first because she's the one that's running out the door because I'm getting the phone call from the school. Where were you working at the time? I was working the uh, AAR Aircraft Component Services. Okay. Which I was very happy to leave. Okay. <laughs> no big deal. At that point, I was All right. done. Okay. Um, but it was, you know, it was tough. It was yeah. really tough. And, you know, trying to find what I what I could do would work. And I, mm-hmm. I had a Tupperware party. Mm. And I had tried one of their products. And somebody, the woman was talking about it. And I was like, oh, my blueberries. And I went to the refrigerator and bought. And she's like, you should be working for Tupperware. And I was like, you know, why not? What the hell? And yeah. I tried it. Okay. And I was with them for five years, and I was wow. a director. And Probably learned a lot. I did. Yeah. And, and I have to say that, you know, the women there, the learning experience from mm-hmm. Tupperware, I definitely say that I carried it over mm. into this. But I've always been in retail. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I have to say, honestly, the biggest place that I got the best mentor yeah. was Filene's Basement in Boston. Wow. And I worked there before it closed. I did four bridal runs. I had the most amazing wow. mentor there. Yes. Who she just, she got under my skin. Yes. She really made me work, made me understand what it was like to work really in reta- work. Really Not work. Not be with, afraid to work right, hard. And be in retail and deal with customers and stuff. And, and, you know, my goal, yes, is my goal a beach house? Would I love a beach house? Yes, that's. I love the beach. Mm-hmm. Snow, Mount Snow, yeah, I do it for the kids. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm very, you know, it's also yeah. very scary because after breaking your back, you're just kind of like yeah. scary. Like, I don't want to fall. I don't want to anything. But then the other part of me, like I finally said this year, I go, you know, because my son learned to ski with the adaptive ski program okay. at Mount Snow. Yeah. And now he's an instructor with them, oh, which is wow. fantastic. Holy cow. But like I your said, son is such I, an inspiration. I, I said, I go, you know, I said, maybe they could teach me how to board. Okay. And he's like, would you, I was like, I kind of want to, I said, yeah. so that maybe I could go on the mountains with you guys. Yeah. I'm scared because of breaking my back. Sure. But as my doctor said, he's like, your back is healed. He's like, mm-hmm. the, the bones regrew. Yeah, you've now got it's a cage. He's like, now it's all up here. He's like, yeah, you're yeah, short. Yeah. You've lost an inch. You're never going to get any shorter, you know, which is great. <laughs> you know, so it's little things like that. But this yeah. woman, she, you know, she was the one who kind of, she's in the back of my head constantly going, you can do this, mm. you know, and I think that as women, we need mentors yeah. that can really get under our skin and push it. And Tupperware, they got under my skin. You know, there were things we didn't agree on and stuff. But sure. It was still the the friends that I made there. These women are, are beautiful women. Yeah. They're, they're so special. And everybody was doing it for different reasons. Mm-hmm. It was to bring in extra money. It was because a husband had died. You know, it, it was all different reasons. Yeah. It was for their kids. Yep. It was the trips that you can earn, the money. That, you know, because yep. Tupperware paid very well. You know, mm-hmm. the, you... You had a $30,000 a month, you had a $5,000 commission. Wow. You know, so it, it was, you know, for me, that was, you know, I had a woman 
my director who pushed me. She's yeah. like, let's go, let's go. You can become a director. You can push out your own. And she was right. And I became a director and I loved it. Mm. You know, but I also had started this in the process and I'm yeah. like, this is, for me, yeah. this was, I found the missing piece to my puzzle. Yeah. And I think that's what it really was because I am in the lifestyle mm -hmm. and that was also a piece of my puzzle that was missing for yeah. so long. It was a discovery process. It was a totally discovery yeah, process. Yeah. And doing this, I was like, I said I love Tupperware and I love mm -hmm. the product and I love the women. Mm -hmm. But this to me, I was like, wait a minute, this is like what I'm missing. Like mm. this is the, the component that's not yeah. there anymore yeah. that I need to bring back in my life. Yeah. And you know, Tupperware, they're like, please don't leave. Please. And I was like, you yeah. know what? I said, I gotta pursue something that is yeah. for me. Ready I said, you never on. know. I yeah. might I might come back sure. one day. Yeah. But now that I'm so immersed in this and yes. that this is yeah. The people that I meet, the women that I meet, mm. it, it's just, you know, yeah. meeting them and, and having discussions and talking to them and they're like, oh, well, you can do this and you can do this. And then, you know, and then like they'll say something I'm like, oh, wait, I can I can alter this for you and I can mm. change this for you. Oh, no, we can do this. And then to give them the product and they're like, holy shit, this is like <laughs> exactly what I wanted, if not more, you know. And to me, that's like I'm going, I'm giving them something that's catering to them yeah. that makes them feel so good about themselves that like when you go to a place like Temptations or Hedonism and they're walking around in the jewelry and they're like, do you know how good I feel? Do you know how? And people are looking and saying comments like, wow, where'd you get that? And that is so sexy. And to me, that's empowering a woman who wasn't feeling good about herself. But I also do it for men too. I've had men come up to me and go, can you design for me, please? And I'm like, <laughs> whatever you want. You know, I have one guy who, no joke at AVN, he was like, I loved, I, I did ones that were like, kind of like Mickey Mouse style a little bit. He's like, can I buy these? So I was like, go right ahead. I'm like, you want them? They're yours. And oh he's gosh. like, oh my God. He's like, these are great. You know, and then I'm on Instagram. I'm like, holy shit, he's posting them all over the place. You know, he's tagging me oh and everything. I'm like, this is great, you yeah. know? So, you know, but then I have guys that come up to me and they're like, I want something very special for my wife or I want something for my girlfriend that's yeah. different. And, you know, well, give me an idea of what you want and then I'll send you pictures of stones and how do you want this done? And, you know, uh -huh. and they're like, you got free reign, do what you want. And then, then they get it and they're like, holy shit. Yeah. You know, like you got it, like you understand it. And that, that for me is a big thing because um, I also um, suffered with infertility. Mm. So I'm an empath, so I feel people and stuff. So yeah. I've done fertility bracelets and I never okay. charge anybody for those. Yeah. And I've had women that have called me, well, it disappeared, the baby was born. I go, it did exactly what it was supposed to. Mm. And like, no, 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 you don't need it back. It did exactly what it was supposed to yeah. and it's gone. Yeah. You know, so for me, it's all about, I want women to feel good about themselves. Sure. And sure. I had to feel good about myself first yep. before I could let anybody else feel good. And that yeah. was a long road. And yep. that's a long road for women. That it is. You know, you have to feel good about yourself. You yeah. have to take back your power. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of women today get lost. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was, I took back my power. And with this business, I've really taken yeah. it back. And I'm like, this is what I need to do. This is where I need to go with these yeah. people. And this is, I've got a product that can make you feel very sexy and make mm -hmm. you feel good about yourself. And it's, you don't have to be scared of it because I've got a lot of people that are scared of it, yeah. you know? And then they try it, they're like, wow, this is, I'm yeah. like, you're not pierced. You're not right. feeling that pain for a year because I know a lot of women that they're like going after like two or three, uh, no, it's gone, we're yeah. done, we took it out because the pain is, is so intense, Yeah, yeah. you know? And you don't realize that and people, you know, they don't, you don't want to tell people that they that they could be in pain. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody wants to tell you that. Yeah. Honestly, when I broke my back and when I went in for the surgery and I'm, I'm looking at the physical therapist, he goes, if he would have told you the truth, would you have been here? I go, no. No, right. I said, and you're right. right. That's true. You know, true. he didn't tell me the truth. He told me the surgery would be an hour and a half. Yeah. I was on that operating table for five and a half hours. Oh my gosh. And when I came out and yeah. he, I, he goes, if I would have told you everything, yep. you would never have come. He goes, and you would have been paralyzed. And yeah. he's right. Because my heart would have said, forget it. Right. Even though my brain knew yeah. you need to do this. Yeah. And that's what it is. It, it's it's you have to learn to say, I have to do this. Mm. I, I have to be okay doing this. And if I fail, yep. I need to try again. Yep. I need to find a different way to try. And mm -hmm. that's what this has been. This has been total trial and error. Mm. Like I have to find different ways to, to make things work. Yeah. You know, and if, if it doesn't work this way, then I have to try a different way. There you and go. It, it's, you know, and it's yeah, not keep easy. Keep on trying. It's not, not easy. Not you giving look at up. It and you're like going, I want to just throw in the towel at times. <laughs> you, you do. You really sit there and go, I'm yeah, done. I'm so done. Take it away. Yeah. And then you go to bed and you think about it and you wake up in the morning and you're like, 
what happens if I do this, this, right. and this? I got and this. I got this. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. that's what it is. You know, I've had yeah. people that ask me to design things, and I'm yeah. like, really? Yeah. Um, uh, I don't get it. Yeah. And, right. and then you just figure it out. And then I try, you overthink it, though. And then you realize, go, you know what? Yeah. I can ask somebody for help. And that's yeah. exactly what I yeah. started doing. I'm like, not to be ignorant. Yes. But I said, I don't understand what you're asking for. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. can you explain it to me? Yeah. And they're like, oh, well, we want. I was like, oh, OK. I was like, I didn't understand, you yep. know, and even even my daughter has said to me, like, somebody asked me for goth stuff. And I'm like, OK. And she shoved yeah. me on Pinterest. She's like, Mom, Pinterest. Yeah, and I yeah. went on it. I designed a piece. The right. company called me. They're like, we are in love with it and we're buying it. Awesome. And I was like, OK, I get it. You know, so it's, it's but you've, yeah. you've got to be willing to of course. learn. Of course. And I think that that's where a lot of people get stuck. They don't yeah. want to move forward if, if it's not black and white. Absolutely. I agree with that. Um, let me I'm going to end with one question here. And uh, I had someone recently submit some questions. I, I, I like yeah, to poll our, our, <laughs> our audience. And one that I've asked now consistently with a few people is, if someone right now would fork over a million dollars for your business, would you take it? No. Why? Because it's my baby and I know that this has got the potential to be so much bigger than a million dollars. Yeah. And yeah, would a million dollars satisfy a lot of things right now? Yes, yeah. but in the long, grand scheme of things, it's just a million dollars right now. Mm -hmm. What's it going to do for me in the end? Yeah. You know, I have kids to put through college. Yeah. I have retirement to worry about. And I love my business. This yeah. is this. And it's my baby. Mm. And that's like, I think it's almost like saying, would you give up your child? No. No. You know, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's my baby and yeah. I'm not ready to give it up. Yep. Am I ready for help? Most definitely. Yeah. You know, and I think that's if somebody said to me, I'll give you a million dollars to yep. help you yeah. to grow and expand. Yeah. Please, by right, all means, right, I right, will. Right, right. But to give it to you, no, because yeah. you're offering a million dollars because you see the potential of what my business is and yeah. you think that I don't have see Ooh, that potential. There you go. I love it. And that's what I think it is. Yeah. That somebody would do that and they're okay. like, well, it's a woman. And that's right there. It's a woman. <laughs> you don't really know everything about it. Yeah. Well, no, I do. And I know what my business is worth. Yeah. I know what my time is worth. And you can't do this because you don't know how to make the product. There you go. So your million dollars. Yeah isn't going to do anything yeah. for me. I'm sensing a lot of passion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so do me a favor. Can you tell everyone your name again, where they can find you, yes. all that good stuff? Promote yourself right now. My name is Helene. I own subsensuals.com. You can find me at subsensuals.com or you can also find me on subsensuals on the Etsy website. And my Instagram is subsensualsjewels and Twitter is subsensuals. And thank you very much for having me. This was great. Oh, you're welcome. It, it, honestly, it was a pleasure having you here. You know, your wealth of knowledge, you're, you're very, very smart. Thank and you. you've, you've been through a lot, but you're leveraging all of your experiences to improve. And I admire that. Thank you very so much. So it's really wonderful. So thank thanks again nice. for coming out to the show. Yes, thank you. All right. So guys, go follow her. If anyone's curious about what she does, um, her website one more time is? is Subsensuals.com. It's S-U-B-S-E-N-S-U-A-L-S.com. There you go. I love it, guys. All right. So go follow her. And uh, guys, remember, you know, don't give up. It's so important here. I think one of one of the great stories that, that we that we heard from Helene is perseverance is, uh, you know, all of these challenges that come up um, or obstacles. You just got to find the solution to these obstacles and persevere through it because success could be right around the corner. Never give up. So very important, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Remember, don't fear the process and don't fear grit. We'll see you next time. Take care, guys.